Welcome to Inside Games, the only gaming news show brave enough to upload videos in 60 frames per second. Ooh, that's right. So much buttery bravery. We got to click YouTube into performance <laughs> mode. Bang, look how fast we go. It's the same. Uh, this buttery frame rate means we're also collectively braver than the entire cast of last week's Gotham Knights, a game that could not manage more than 30 FPS on console. Ugh. Yeah. yeah given that most games released this console generation so far have offered a 60 FPS performance mode, it, it really makes you wonder why Arkham Knights couldn't manage it. It really does. Uh, and that's probably where it would have ended until a Rocksteady developer fell victim to one of the classic blunders sharing honest opinions on the internet. <laughs> Every time I hope it works out, so it happens more often, and here we are. I guess we're kind of, we're not really helping, but, yeah, who cares? <laughs> um, yeah, so the result, where we end up, we have one completely nuked Twitter account, and the humble Xbox Series S called out as holding back this entire generation of games. Mm -hmm. Just another week of the internet having a real one. Uh, the controversy around Gotham Knights started earlier this month when Floor Marty, a producer on the game, discussed the game's lack of a performance mode on consoles. Posting on Discord, Marty explained that due to Gotham Knights' untethered open-world co-op, the game just couldn't simply scale down in resolution to get a higher FPS like most games do, really. That means that Gotham Knights would only run at 30 FPS on consoles, which annoyed some gamers and led to criticism of developer WB Games Montreal. And yeah, there's been a lot of criticism. <laughs> I have seen it. Um, but then the controversy jumped to a whole nother level when Rocksteady Studios senior character technical artist Lee Devonald jumped in. Is it Devonald? Devonald, Devonald, Devonald. Let's, let's say Devonald. To be clear here, Devonald didn't work on Gotham Knights. Rocksteady is a different developer than WB Games Montreal. So Rocksteady developed the Arkham Trilogy. They're currently working on Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League. In a series of now deleted tweets, Devonald blamed the Xbox Series S for holding back modern games. Uh, luckily, folks on the internet have a hair trigger screenshot when hot takes start flying. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Old generation raised on Pokemon Snap. Of course we're going to get that. Yeah, Devonald wrote that quote. I wish gamers understood what 60 FPS means in terms of all the things they lose to make the game run that fast. Especially taking into account that we have a current gen console that's not much better than a last gen one. So now when he talks about what we lose to make games run fast, he's referring to features like dynamic time of day and global illumination, not to mention basic things like shadows and number of enemies. Uh, all things that may get compromised in order to make a game run at the holy grail of 60 FPS. The 60 FPS games just have less graphics. They just turn the dial down. Makes sense. But you may have noticed that current gen console that he bashed made it very clear talking about the Xbox Series S there. Devonald specifically singled out its GPU, saying that, quote, multi-platform games always have to optimize for the lowest performer. Yeah, and I, I believe him. Uh, he went on to say that Microsoft won't let you launch on one console without the other, which I didn't know. Uh, it's a reference to the Series X and Series S. And then he finished with a flourish, writing, quote, an entire generation of games hamstrung by that potato. Ooh, I do love calling things potatoes, though. <laughs> I, I immediately have affection for anything that's compared to a potato, so it, yeah, it, it's only making me like it more. But obviously, that set off a bit of a firestorm or a cyberstorm, as you may have heard. Uh, <laughs> Devon later apologized for the posts and deleted them. And then he took the ultimate step of nuking his whole Twitter account. So it's oh just a smoking gosh. crater now. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, on one hand, we can certainly understand why a senior technical artist would have strong opinions about the graphical flourishes and tools they have to leave behind for the sake of a discount console. But on the other hand, maybe not the best idea to accuse a huge business partner of hamstringing your entire industry. <laughs> yep, that's a real collar tugger to do that on the internet. <laughs> technically speaking though, this is the fun part. Devonald has the point. He's technically correct, which is the best kind of correct. Uh, there's actually a pretty big difference in the GPUs of the Series S and the Series X. The budget-priced Series S's GPU will give you four teraflops of computing power versus the more than 10 teraflops you get on the Series X. And here's the fun part. The Series S is more comparable to, yes, a PlayStation 4 Pro, which actually pushed 4.19 teraflops. So it is a last-gen console, basically. That's right, because Gotham Knights did not release on the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One. So it kind of makes sense. But it did kind of release on it because of the Series S. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was just a port away. Oh, boy. Uh, and while Devonald apologized, uh, his comments did provide some candid talk from a developer about the limitations of a less powerful console that studios still have to take into account. It makes sense the Series S would be holding games back. It's just that really nobody has come right out and said that right now. Uh, much less call it a potato. <laughs> yeah. 
At any rate, Gotham Knights released last week to middling reviews. The Series X version got a 64 on Metacritic, and that also includes the Series S version. The aggregators don't really split them in terms of the platform. Your gamer called it a, quote, slight muddle of a game. Hmm. Would a 60 FPS performance mode have helped those scores? Probably not a bunch, but, I mean, it is a standard. It really is a standard that a lot of gamers expect, especially on current-gen consoles that have made a really, really big deal about how powerful they are. Yeah, so this is this is an interesting checkpoint. I don't know, Bruce, how important is 60 FPS in games to you? It's very important. So I, at this point, I really have started noticing that. And I play on a 120 hertz monitor. Uh, if, you know, games can get to 120 for me on PC, great. Um, 60, totally fine. 30, I just don't play them. So on consoles, especially consoles that are basically PCs, that were built to be really powerful uh, for the next generation of console. Not having a 60 FPS thing, even if you don't care about it, you're gonna play it and go, why does this feel different? Why does this feel not like other games that I'm playing on the PS5 or Xbox Series X? And there's a reason. It's not 60 FPS. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, I, I agree. With that original comment of wanting to make gamers understand what they're losing, I don't care. It can be anything. As long as the game logic still <laughs> yeah. works, I'll take 60 over 30, and you can turn off shadows and like, oh, throw it all out the window. Um, maybe, mm -hmm. well, I can think of a few games. All right, so I have to reel that in a little bit. These games aren't made anymore, but games <laughs> like, uh, what was it? Uh, the Vampire game, The Order, 1886, and like Rise, Son of, like the, oh, sure. the technical showcases that play really sluggishly, or like even Resistance Fall of Man kind of felt like this garbage frame rate but it was it was like meant to be a playable movie basically so it looked really pretty but that was the point it didn't ask you to play a game really you just had to hit buttons to stay alive so eh, that's really the only only thing but Bruce since I know you play on PC I'm curious how you feel about this how do you feel about the presence of a cheaper console holding back games oh man it bugs me um especially because I have played so much of Gotham Knights and enjoyed it uh and so it's really funny for me, when I'm streaming it or talking to people about it, they're always like, man, this game's garbage. And I'm like, I've had a blast, but that's because I'm playing on PC. And so I've been telling people, your experience will probably vary if you're playing on the Series X, Series S, or PlayStation 5. It's much like Cyberpunk, the same deal with Cyberpunk. We're like, Cyberpunk, I was playing on PC, and both you and I were like, whoa! And then everybody else, <laughs> yeah. everybody else is playing on PS4, and is like, this is trash. So um, it seems like experiences are differing greatly when it comes to these games that are across all platforms. Yeah, uh, I guess ideally, I mean, you bring up Cyberpunk, it's it's constantly cited that they had to support last gen as to why the game launched in such a shitty shape. So it does cause developers to stretch themselves a little more thinly. Um, where luckily we're not in this era anymore, but it's interesting to see these sorts of conversations happening in the console space because in the PC space, that's basically all it's been, I feel like is that PC has had like overpowered hardware and oh, overpowered yeah. video Always. acceleration. A lot of it just sits unused because games aren't really made to that spec. They're made for consoles. Uh, if all you played was console, you didn't really notice because you thought you were at the top of the line the whole time. So there's, <laughs> I guess my point is there's always something that's going to be the bottom line spec and somebody else is going to look down on it. So eh, I, uh, it kind of makes sense to me that Microsoft wouldn't mind the bottom spec being lower just to get a low cost box out the door that can access Game Pass. Oh, right, of course. Which, uh, speaking of, we got some Game Pass news, too. Oh! Yeah, even if Microsoft tried to save you a few bucks on the Series S, it might be getting that back and increased Game Pass subscription costs in the very near future. Oh, boy. It was always a matter of when, not if, with a Game Pass price increase. Speaking at a Wall Street Journal conference this week, Xbox gaming head Phil Spencer let us know that win is on the horizon. <laughs> we should have yeah. savored it while we had, I guess it's still, it's still good times. It's still going, Savor still going. Now. Tom Warren of The Verge quoted him as saying, I do think at some point we'll have to raise the prices on certain things, but going into this holiday, we thought it was important to maintain the prices. <laughs> Spencer's indirectly referencing Xbox's price advantage heading into the 2022 holiday season here. Thanks to Sony jacking up the price of the PlayStation hardware back in August. He went on to say, I don't think we'll be able to do that forever. I do think at some point we'll have to raise some prices on certain things. Oh, uh, that could be interpreted as a possible price hike on new AAA games from 60 to $70, which a lot of people are already doing. I mean, COD is $70 across the board everywhere. Yeah, it's also a pretty clear sign that the price of Game Pass, which has been considered one of the best values in gaming, will be going up. 
Uh, you know, well, it's not a huge surprise. It only makes sense if you compare it to other streaming services like Netflix or literally anything else that just bumps that price up a couple of dollars every year. Yeah, it does run the risk of turning off price conscious gamers who might not feel like they're getting their money's worth. Uh, like we said, Game Pass is first and foremost known as a great value and Microsoft kind of doesn't want to mess with that perception. So I'd be really surprised if they raise this like $5 more a month or something. And despite burning cash to make Game Pass the value that it currently is, apparently it's not growing as much as Microsoft wants. Ooh, Axios's Steven Totillo reports that for the second year in a row, Game Pass subscriber growth fell short of a company target. Uh, specifically, Microsoft wanted a 73% growth rate for Game Pass for the fiscal year that ended on June 30th, but it only hit 28% growth, which is far short of that target. Yeah, but that's still really good. I <laughs> I don't know. Seventy three sounds sounds bananas to me. Yeah, that sounds like it's specifically off the back of a thing that must not have happened. That's all I can figure. Mm. I don't know how they would. That's almost doubling your subscriber growth in a year. And they already have over ten million. They have like uh yeah they have like twenty five million. What the heck? Maybe I don't know what they were thinking. Lawrence, maybe maybe Halo. Yeah, maybe <laughs> they might have been thinking Halo Infinite <laughs> was going to bring in a lot of people. And it should have, but it's also free to play, so I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Weird know. stuff. Uh, uh, but in terms of hard data, we don't actually have exact numbers on how many people subscribe to Game Pass. Last info we got was 25 million at the beginning of 2022, and that's when Microsoft announced their pending acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Uh, missing that target is actually a big deal because Game Pass is one of the key features of Xbox as a console, of course. Yeah, it's become synonymous. And it also affects the pay of Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella because it's part of his overall annual performance incentives. It's not a huge part. Hitting the target was just 5% of his performance metrics in 2021. It was 10% this year. But it goes to show you how much of a priority Game Pass is for Microsoft as a corporation. That's right. Uh, Totilla reported that the success of Game Pass factors into the performance incentives of other top Microsoft executives, too. Yeah, so it's baked in there. That's mm -hmm. uh, It's deep. Uh, at the Wall Street Journal conference, Phil Spencer said that Game Pass is profitable for us, making up about 10 to 15% of Microsoft's content and services revenue. Yeah, that figure is interesting because it doesn't quite match the 2.9 billion in revenue that popped out of Brazil's regulatory review of their Activision acquisition. Tweaktown's Derek Strickland ran the numbers, finding that 10 to 15% of Microsoft's content and services revenue actually ranges from 1.2 to 1.8 billion. Ooh, big L, big L on Microsoft. <laughs> Only 1.8 billion maybe. <laughs> and and that kind of factors into the the uh, profitability claim there. The claiming the Game oh, yeah. Pass is profitable is that sounds weird to me. I mean, I know that it's not it's not really like knocked against the same same costs, but surely that profitability does not include the billions they have spent and are about to spend on studios they're buying for Game Pass, right? I mean, that's completely valid, especially since they were spending almost seventy billion on the. Yeah, uh, I can't. There's no way. Acquisition. Yeah, that's really weird. Uh, just for fun, here's how to put some of this money in perspective. At 25 million subscribers a year for Game Pass, each paying $15 for 12 months, it would take Microsoft just over 15 years to earn their money back on the pending $69 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard. That could explain Microsoft's extremely aggressive growth targets. It, it totally does. Okay. I want to say there's no way that Microsoft would just like cut the check and then work out in reverse how much they have to sell to make up for it. Yeah. But I don't know. I've worked for companies that do that. It's a little weird. <laughs> they spend the money and then they're like, okay, here's how many subscribers we need to get. This seems like it's backwards anyway. Uh, Spencer also said that the growth of Game Pass was incredible on PC, but slowed down on console. According to Phil, quote, at some point you've reached everyone on console that wants to subscribe. Yeah, so Game Pass is still doing well, but it might be hitting a saturation point uh, among console gamers. Yeah? Almost like you need a cheap, easily purchasable console that can act as an entry point to your subscription system. So... Ah, oh, the Series S! Yeah, yeah. It makes sense, <laughs> right? So, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting to see all this stuff kind of connect, I guess, in terms of corporate strategy. And then see the unintended ripple effects out when it comes to game design and, and processing like that. But uh, Bruce, I'm curious to hear your take on this on the business side of things. Do you do you find these growth targets realistic at all, uh, or is Microsoft overspending here? No, I think they're overspending, um, and they're also over. So here's what I think happened. I think that they made a ton of money during the pandemic, just like every other video game company. And then for some reason, like every other company that I've seen, are like it's gonna go forever, and then it doesn't. Because of course it doesn't. 
It's They're really possessed. weird. It's so weird. It's such a weird thing that they were like anticipating that it was going to continue after the pandemic when people are outside. So I think that's why this is so high at like 73% because they assumed that 2020 and 2021 were establishing what would tw- what 2022 and 2023 would be. And that is absolutely not not the case. Now, I, I know it sounds ridiculous because I'm sure someone in that boardroom mentioned it and was like, uh, uh the pandemic is kind of letting up a little bit. But I still think they were like, we need to make more money like they always do. Yeah, I'm I try to figure out what world that figure is attainable that that reasonable minds in the room were like yes 73 percent year over year is 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 an attainable growth i i just like regardless of what they saw i even try to think of how it's possible in the world you would need like a huge banner game that just has baked in marketability um starfield is going to be interesting but it's new ip uh elder scrolls 6 like call of duty is it actually if call of duty were exclusive to game pass all right you sail past your 73 percent you're done but they didn't expect that this year. Uh, that's pretty clear. So it's still a bit of a mystery to me. Uh, but I am I am curious to see, almost in terms of just like market leverage, as Microsoft keeps grabbing IP and then putting them behind the Game Pass barrier, exactly how many people are going to want to pay to get in because of that brand. So Call of Duty is the biggest one, but Starfield will be a really interesting test. Completely agree. Um, hey, my patron Series S's, they've never held a game back in their life. You know that? Never. Uh, David Mill, Jonathan Lanowski, Tito007, Regulus, Kyle Abbott, Brown Sugar. Thank you very much for being our patrons and never holding games back. All right, I got a whole group of patron series X's that graciously accept their Series S friend. There's no resentment there at all. It's just, it really warms your heart. And Everyday Brian, Spirit Bear, Cobra Firebird, Maurice Thompson, Docs360, UESC Battleroid, and JMbers87. Thank you. Thank you for accepting all games and consoles. 